I might better not knock over my ring light. Oh boy. Okay. Hi, ghost. Hey, what's up? It's the Ikusk. I'm going to be talking about music that I actually heard in 2018. I was not a lazy f Woo! So basically, I listened to some new music in the January of 2018. I'm going to tell you all the shit I listened to in the January of 2018. I did put Too Close to Touch is Burn on the list. I, I need to still listen to that because I forgot some of it. All right, since I've heard this track again, I have to admit it's a pretty solid breakup track. I believe it is about addiction from what I've read on Too Close to Touch's Twitter. Obviously, just the chorus gives me some sort of life. I don't know how to explain it. It's just so upbeat and kind of angry, like, not like angry, angry, but it's just, you can just feel a release of anger. You know, I just want to burn all the faith you had in me and everything. It it gives me some sort of, I don't know, energy. I think that's how I should put it. With that being said, I can see where the diction's coming from, especially in the chorus. I have to listen to it a few times to really get the true meaning. Just, I don't know, the instrumentals give me life. <laughs> um, obviously, I've always enjoyed the vocals that came too close to touch. It is very swan core esque and that always is just a plus to me. I do enjoy, like, Dance Gavin Dance and all of those kinds of bands. Hail the Sun, you know what I mean. Basically, that's what I hear from Too Close to Touch and every single song they put out makes you feel something which if you're into having music that makes you feel more than dancing then Too Close to Touch is one of those bands that you can get into. You have this melancholy feeling when you hear them and they're really good live too so if you're into sad boy music and you know you want to see a show I suggest you see Too Close to Touch. I've seen them twice already and they killed it both times, so that's a suggestion for you dudes. Another song I listened to was Masochist by Mourners. If you don't know, Mourners has a, a lovely member of Night Terrors of 1927 in the band. And if you don't know who Night Terrors of 1927 is, you're musically illiterate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Basically, they were a solid alternative pop band. They had a song with Tegan and Sarah. It's all that matters. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yeah, if, if you're into alternative pop, Everything's Coming Up Rose is a solid ass album. And if you haven't heard it yet, you should, because if I were to compile a list of my top 10 favorite albums, that album would be somewhere on that list. And that says a lot, I think. I'm pretty sure it does. You know, I, I got kind of pissed when people were like, I don't know this band when they were like opening like VNYL packages. Like, dude, VNYL know what they're doing when they're sending you that album because that album is straight up fire. Like, stop listening to that Halsey. <laughs> listen to that Night Terrors in 1927. You know, you gotta listen to me, fam, all right? But basically, you know, Mourners has a member from that lit alternative pop band in there. And you know, Mourners is like this lo-fi Joyce Manor Weezer band. And you know what? I enjoy it, okay? Enjoy the lo-fi sound sound. And Masochist was a bop for me. I had to listen to it three times in a row or something because I was just I was just so down with it. If you're into like that lo-fi garage sound, I suggest you listen to it. single is No Destination by The Garden. If you don't know, Vada Vada is a weird genre. If you want to get into Vada Vada, don't listen to All Axis. First, you should listen to All Axis after you listen to No Destination. That That's my only tip for you. Vada Vada is just an interesting genre and I think No Destination is like the perfect starter song for this. It, it No Destination makes me actually want to listen to Vada Vada for sure. Ghost, why do you like this? Jesus. Vada Vada is just an interesting genre, like I said. No Destination is a song you have to listen to with headphones, though. If you listen to it on speakers for the first time, you, you might think it's just as weird as Staying up late, have a great time. <laughs> 
it's not necessarily the case. Like, you know, it's just gonna turn you off at first, but then you're gonna listen to it again and be like, yeah, this is legit. So with that being said, if you do wanna listen to No Destination, you have to get your headphones on and enjoy that bass. and all the technicals going straight into your ear. Just that bass with like that instrumental breakdown part. I know it's not post hardcore, but it's like a breakdown kind of thing, you know? Like a bridge um, to like think the last chorus. I know this is Vada Vada, but still, it's, it happens in all genres. The breakdown. <laughs> You know, we can't mosh to all of them, but they still exist. No Destination has one of those and it's the most relatable thing ever. And if you like weird music videos, just listen to The Garden. Let's be lucky people, you and me. The last piece of new music I listened to was The Water Parks. Entertainment really struck a chord with me. I do enjoy Peach Parentheses Lobotomy and Tantrum. Like I've been returning to those songs. And basically I did put Not Warriors on my list again for, well, on my 2018 list. If you don't know, I did make a best of 2018 list with the album. I think it's just them really, really amping up their irony here. And, you know, the main reason why I love Water Parks is because they're the most ironic band out there. They're they're just as ironic as that poppy, but people don't know they're that ironic. And it, it takes you a few listens to get how ironic they are. They have the nice boy band aesthetic with meaningful songs with just... Uh, it, it's great, okay? They act like a 90s boy band, but they just make songs dissing just the music industry and just people using you, not feeling good enough, boring towns, relationship issues. It has that pop punk aesthetic while having the boy band aesthetic, as you can see. Entertainment just plays on that irony. That's why I love Tantrum, because it's just, it really just shows how ironic Water Parks is. Nobody loves those frick boys in bands, plus people just using you because you're famous, am I right? <laughs> I guess now you can tell they're ironic with entertainment you get that they're just twisting words and that their lyrics aren't just 90s boy band stuff, but they look like it. You know, you, you do really just see every single little thing <laughs> that comes with the water parks with this album. I, you know, I don't, I, I don't really know how else to explain it. Just as a whole, that's how it comes out. And I guess Tantrum's really the song that sticks out to me when it comes to their irony, because they're like, oh, boy bands and then you know you hear it and you're just like oh my god they're just so ironic <laughs> obviously i love the single blonde like it didn't make my list because obviously i liked peach and not warriors more and i obviously put tantrum there too but it, it was a solid single and it just did really take a play on i guess blonde stereotypes and just okay so like tired me did not know what they were thinking because I just re-listened to the song Blonde and it just reminds me of why I wear bright clothes when I'm sad. Like, dude, Austin, you're so relatable, Jesus. <laughs> and oh my god, Sam, you're so stupid when you're tired. So I don't know, like, those those are my vibes on music. So that's just what I was listening to in the 2018s, and yeah. I don't feel like reviewing. But yeah, anyways, this is the Kusk. Peace out, hug a tree. Say bye, ghost. Come on, ghost. Ghost says bye. Um, I'm not wearing Jack Skellington pants right now. Please ignore that. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Peace out. Hug a tree, my dudes. <laughs>